Welcome back, Novello Nation, to another episode of the Aaron Novello Podcast. We have with us a super sharp young man, the co-founder of ListQuick, an up-and-coming online platform that not only connects consumers with top producing agents in a geographic area, but also has this interesting take on it and is um, systematically creating a database of the top agents so they can refer to one another uh, with an interesting referral model, Mr. Alec Weichel. I appreciate you taking the time to be with me, brother. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And I think this will be a great opportunity to uh, let people know what's what's coming with ListQuick. Exactly, man. That's why I wanted to do this. I shared with you that I was on my Instagram feed and I saw yeah. it pop up. I'm like, oh man, I got to get Alec on the podcast right away. So I guess for those who aren't aware, um, you're part of, for a lot of people, like uh, kind of real estate royalty in a way. Um, so <laughs> kind of share your experience kind of growing up around real estate because I'm aware you very much so grew up around real estate. Yeah. So you, of course, know my dad, Neil Weichel. Um, you guys have uh, been phone partners and, you know, shared business uh, acumen with each other over the years. Um, so yeah, he's been my dad my whole life. And, <laughs> yeah, that uh, he has. <laughs> uh, yeah. And he's been doing real estate since I was very small. So, um, you know, I whether it was before or after practice going on a listing appointment with him and, you know, just kind of being quiet and hanging out and keeping my ears open. Cause you know, that's what you do. Um, that happened on many occasions, you know, up until I could drive basically. Um, so a lot, and as you know, my dad is a very hard worker. Um, and he can say he doesn't work seven days a week, but he does. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, I've been on many a listing appointment, many a sit down with a first time buyer, um, heard a lot of real estate terms like per diem and contingency and things like that, that, you know, the average person might not really be privy to. Um, so yeah, a lot of, a lot of just exposure to being around, um, a real estate salesperson and, you know, what a day of that looks like. That's exactly right. And he's being modest, ladies and gentlemen, like an elite real estate salesperson, one of the best on planet earth. Uh, Neil's been a role play partner of mine for 12 years. He's been an accountability partner. We mastermind together. And um, I actually had him on the podcast as well. So you can check out that episode. So you grew up around real estate, right? Grew up around listening to it and hearing it. And I know you have other siblings. So I guess I'm curious, like talk about your journey to deciding like the real estate space was a space that you wanted to, you know, make your mark and kind of, you know, work in? Yeah. So uh, I have two sisters, uh, both older. Sarah uh, works, uh, did work in the talent management uh, industry and has recently pivoted to interior design, which is ironically real estate adjacent. Yes. Um, but yeah, very successful, very much like my dad. Um, she's very much a go-getter, very proud of her. Uh, my other sister, Sarah, or, uh, sorry, Kate is in London. Um, she works in physical fitness and you know, not real estate currently. Uh, for me, I think there was always kind of like the vein of an entrepreneur, even if it wasn't, you know, exactly mirrored the way my dad is. Um, you know, I'm not a very, I'm not a driver, you know, I'm not um, exactly the same energy as he is, but, you know, going back to like selling Smarties out of my backpack in sixth grade, just, you know, making an extra buck or, you know, I'm, a lot of entrepreneurs have some kind of something like that, um, you know, <laughs> selling a watch to someone at school because they were willing to pay more than what it was worth, just like random stuff like that, where it's like, I never took advantage of anyone, but like, I just kind of watched and was like, oh, hey, there's you know, there's opportunity. People want to buy Smarties. I'll sell them Smarties, whatever it is. So there was always a little bit of that. And then it matured uh, while I was in college. And um, of course, with a deeper understanding of the internet and the maturation of the internet and what was possible, you know, a, a big understanding for me was how much money is out there. Um, I think I had a, as many people do, a skewed perspective of like what money is and like there's a very, very select few people that have a lot of money and then, you know, it's a pie in the sky chance for everyone else. And that's just not the reality, especially with the internet. 
Um, you know, if you're willing to pay attention and, and see where attention and, and demand is drawn um, and you're willing to put some work in and be a little bit patient, uh, things can happen. So anyway, long story short, uh, it all kind of came to a head. Um, a couple summers ago, I was, I knew that I wanted to start my own business. Um, and I decided we need to niche it down. We need to pick a specific industry. And I said, I have the most background knowledge of real estate, um, obviously. So, uh, that's what I decided to do. I love that, man. And I love, I was taking notes as we're speaking like self-awareness. So what I think is really cool is because I know your dad very well is that, um, you're like, oh, like I'm, I'm very much so entrepreneurial. It's mm -hmm. just perhaps in a different like uh, version or a different package of entrepreneurship where we have different personality yeah. types, but we're very much so similar. Um, and then I loved your story about uh, selling stuff. So I used to sell airheads out of my backpack at the bus stop. Nice. And it was, it was a quarter <laughs> for, it's like dating myself, but it was a quarter for like uh, the regular flavors, but for the mystery flavor, it was a dollar. Oh, we buy them at Costco and slang them out of the backpack, right? So I oh, totally yeah. get that. And um, the other thing I think is cool is that you recognize that, you know, you're motivated by, okay, the opportunity that uh, you can accumulate resources. And off camera prior to having this conversation, I know that you're, you know, kind of socially conscious in that way. So it's not just to enrich yourself, but it's also to help and serve other people. And um, that's great. So then you, you made the decision like, okay, I know the most about real estate. So let's go into that particular niche, right? So mm -hmm. then talk to me about how you kind of came up with the idea of ListQuick, which again is an online platform. And I know you've done extensive study of that particular kind of sector of the industry, which is growing very rapidly because people are going online before they reach out to agents. And yeah. there's, there's these platforms that are getting in the middle, selling their own products and services. So what did you see there that caused you to say like, you know what, I think we can do this a little better. Yeah. So, I mean, full disclosure, my original idea started as a centralized marketing service for real estate agents, um, where we would not only, you know, take care of staging, photography, print materials, all of those marketing services, but also the kicker, um, Google ads, because of course, you know, people's attention has been directed towards the internet. And um, I'm pretty sure Tom Ferry said recently, and I'll have to go back and check, but he said something to the effect of by 2025, 50% of all leads will be generated online by a third party source. Um, and I think he's absolutely right. I think it could happen sooner than that, depending on the sample size you're using. So, um, you know, and then, uh, so anyway, to get back to the original idea was the centralized marketing service. And then I pitched it to my dad and he, you know, he shared with me, you know, his idea of having a centralized referral service for agents where, you know, if you're a top agent like yourself, Aaron Novello in Florida, and you have uh, a seller who's moving to Nashville and, or let's use something more obscure, Hendersonville, Tennessee, right? And you don't have a referral partner there, but you wish you had someone that was as reliable as you to, to give your client to, to make sure that they're taken care of. Well, now you do. That's what ListQuick fills the gap of. We've spent um, over 12 months scouring data um, and not only data and algorithm type work, but actually human people uh, with a background in real estate looking through hundreds and hundreds of reviews to see, okay, who truly is the, the most reliable or who truly are the most reliable agents across the country. Um, and not only that, but also don't have any weird sketchiness in the background. You know, like I've read reviews where people will pay a client not to post a bad review about them online. And that's just an immediate red flag. I'm like, I, I don't know why you would do that. But anyway, this just kind of illustrates the point that there's so many agents out there, right? Over a, well over a million licensed agents across the country. But the amount of agents that are actually good that you would want to work with and you would refer to your brother or sister um, it's very few. It's less than 5,000. Yeah. So this is country. great. So I'm, I'm taking notes here. So, um, this idea that like 50% of all deals in the future will have a referral fee attached. I think that's very true. Um, I'm seeing that, uh, cause you know, I also coach and train agents that the agents that I coach at high levels, it's already 30% of their business, give or take 25 to 30%. Right. And that's uniform, that's uniformly like across the board. 
So yeah. what I think is very interesting to that is how breathtakingly fast that has happened. It's probably like in the yeah. last two and a half, three years, that 30% of the business now is coming from this other source that takes referral fees. And I think as time progresses, that'll, like you said, with a high degree of probability, that'll continue. So that means less and less will be coming out of your database, right? Right. Which is kind of an interesting thought. And it seems as though the main way that, you know, one of the main ways that you're differentiating is like, if I had somebody in Hendersonville and I don't know anybody, I'm going to either Google or I got to go to like another one of these platforms to like look them up and try to make a decision as to who's what and who's good. And mm -hmm. what you're saying is like, look, we've done that due diligence. We have this database of super reliable people that perform at very, very high levels, which is difficult for the consumer to sift through. Because if there's mm -hmm. millions of agents and the vast majority of them, 50% of them don't do a deal. And of those other 50%, you know, the majority of them don't do that many deals. You're basically um, figuring out a way through lots of time, energy, effort, and resources to drill that down to the absolute elite agents all across the country. So that way we're making sure that those referrals are going to those people versus these other platforms who give it out to everybody. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to speak ill of anyone else. I just want to speak well about what we're doing. But yes, the other platforms out there uh, that you might see on TV or something are sending these leads, almost all of them, to nine, 10 plus agents in your area. I'm sorry, there's just not that many agents that are truly reliable that are going to perform the job at a high level. If you're look, I mean, look, we're talking about selling a house, the most valuable asset that 99% plus of people have. Right. So take that seriously. Like you want to work with someone who's really going to get the job done and, and get you the best result. And yeah, there's just not 12 plus people that can do it. There's two, three, maybe four. <laughs> yeah. And what's so interesting, and I think this is like a main differentiator because a lot of people who like coach and train, like they physically aren't actively selling real estate. So they don't, they're not like on the ground. I just went on an appointment last week where it was from one of these platforms. They gave it out to multiple people. Me and this other person were competing. And when I'm sitting there uh, at the listing presentation, I'm like, so have you already decided that you would like for me to help you with the sale? Because to me, it's like a slam dunk. It's like my backyard, sold 100, you know, 30, 140 homes this year, 500 five-star reviews. Like what else is there to think about? Right. But what she said to me is she's like, ah, like I'm, I'm not sure. And I, because I'm being playful, I'm like, really? <laughs> like, really? And she's like, yeah, really? And she starts laughing. And I'm like, okay, well, I know this is a big decision. You want to make sure you're making the best decision possible. So what I'd like to do is just kind of perhaps share with you some information that will help you to make the decision that you feel is best. And whatever you decide to do, I'll support you hundred percent. Okay. She's like, yeah, that's sure. fine. So I told her like the general consumer, they imagine that we all do the same things and sell the same amount of homes when in fact, that's actually not the case. And now because of the internet, you can verify that. Mm -hmm. So what I'd like to do is I'm just going to Google my name real quick and I'm going to show you something. And I did, and it showed her how many homes we sold this year. And I said, what I can do for you, if you think it would be helpful, is I can also look up the name of the other individual that you are considering, and then you can compare apples to apples. So you can make the sure. decision you feel is best. And again, I'm sure they're a nice person. I'm not trying to disparage their character in any way. It's more so this is a business decision and you want to make sure you're making the best decision possible. Would that be helpful to you? She's like, yeah. I pulled them up, sold two homes in 12 months. And I just left it in her face for like you know a minute. And then she's like, oh, that's not good, is it? I'm like, I don't know. Like, would you want somebody helping you? It's only done it twice in a year or hundreds of times in the same year. So to your point, the, a lot of these platforms, you know, they're giving it to everybody because I think that their perception is, is that it doesn't matter. When yeah. I think the reality is like, I don't know, if you're in a marketplace that's white, white hot, where everything sells and you could be a rum dum and show up and flip bops and like put it at any price and it's probably going to sell, like, okay, that might be true. In a marketplace that, you know, where things are shifting and changing, even in that marketplace, it's not true, but, you know, that could happen. They could produce the outcome. But as things shift and change, like that doesn't really work. And really, when you think about it, it's like, well, is that in the best interest of the consumer? I don't know. I'm not convinced that it is, right? Because they're getting all of these people. And like you said, the majority of them are really not producing at high levels and they're not going to have the systems, processes, and procedures that are needed to provide good service. So that's one of the main differences of your platform versus others. Is that right? Yeah, that's absolutely right. Um, there will be a high level of accountability on list quick. So one thing that people might be interested to know is that it's not just, oh, hey, we spent all this time looking through all these agents and like, these are the good ones set in stone, we're done. 
will actively be monitoring the network to make sure that it stays the most reliable agents in the country day to day, right? So like if someone is, you know, older or further along in their business life cycle and getting ready to retire or getting ready to not be in the business and they have people working under them, that's something that we'll know about and we'll say, oh, hey, Mark XYZ uh, is no longer, you know, one of our go-to people in Dallas. We got to fill that gap. And that's awesome. No, yeah, no other company does that. Yeah. So you'll be basically like constantly cleansing that list. It's not like it's yeah. like, that's it. And you're there and you're going to be there forever. It's more like, okay, well, we're going to be constantly monitoring that constantly monitoring, like making sure that this person is still the go-to person in this geographic area. And by the way, uh, there is a review function for the agents on our platform. So agents will be reviewed by their peers. Um, meaning, you know, if you send a referral to uh, James XYZ in Nashville and James XYZ doesn't do a good job or the clients are unsatisfied for some reason and they let you know about that, you will go write him a review and say, hey, James, what the hell? This is what happened. And then we'll see that immediately and either it'll get rectified and it won't happen again or James won't be in the network anymore. So it'll That's be a awesome. very high level of accountability. Yeah. And it sounds like it's peer to peer accountability. And the other, th what popped into my head as a coach is like, all right, well, what if we can create an SOP around delivery for the agent who referred? So like a standard operating procedure where they get like updates, you know, your VA or whoever, who's like updating. Okay. It's on the market. Okay. We got an offer. Okay. It's, you know, out of attorney review. Okay. We closed. And then when the referral check goes out, they get something else with it. Like something it's like, Hey, thanks for the opportunity, you know, appreciate it, whatever. So that way you can maintain that super strong relationship. Now, the other thing you shared with me, which I think is very interesting too, is that the difference as well is, is a lot of these platforms, um, you know, again, they are very much so like a third party that's getting into the transaction via attention, the internet, then they're either selling their own products or services, or they're taking referral fees. And one of the ways that ListQuick is different is that, um, you know, you will be doing advertising as well to the consumers, but the kind of um, network of agents, the members, right? You have to be mm -hmm. invited uh, to be in it. It's not like it's yep. anybody can do it. And right. then if, if agents refer to each other via that network, there's actually no referral fee. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. So the, uh, again, this all really started as um, filling a void that hasn't been uh, filled by the agent perspective, right? So um, the whole process of sending referrals is not uniform at all. It's, you know, do you check your Rolodex? Do you check your online CRM? Do you check your database to see who you have? And then you call them and you got to make sure that they're, you know, still the agent they were the last time you sent them a referral. And then, okay, you email them this form and you, you follow up with them, but, you know, you pretty much just hope that they're going to cut you that check. Um, and so this will completely centralize the process and um, it, it'll just curb the length of time it'll take for you to make sure that you have a good referral partner instead of like you were saying earlier whether it's the agent or a consumer going on to google looking through all the agents looking through all the reviews that takes a lot of time and for someone who's doing a high level of business you probably don't have 30 to 40 minutes to parse through everything for one referral no way. Um, so yeah that's where we come in yeah and i love that because like we were talking you know off camera it's like this idea of mental maps where mm -hmm. Um, how old are you? I'm 26. It's awesome. Love it. And so I'm 41. So like our mental maps are a little bit different. And we were saying like, okay, so, um, you're used to like less friction mm -hmm. where if I want something, I click something and it happens. So when you look at agents like me or like other agents where they have to find an agent to refer to and they go online and they Google and they mess around and they check here and they check here, like, bro, this is, this is insanely inefficient. Yeah. And, you know, I don't look at it with judgment, of course, like, you know, um, maybe a little, it's okay. That... <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, bro. You're like, Hey, what are you doing, bro? Grandpa? Like this, there's a better way to do this, which is great well, I mean... though, because I love like that mixture. Right. So it's like, um, you know, that mixture of thinking of mental maps. And I think if you can triangulate ideas with believable people, I had this experience with uh, one of the guys I coach Angel Garcia, and we were at an event and I couldn't find where we were going. 
like we needed to be in a room for like some mastermind. And my first inclination, first thing that pops into my head is looking for somebody with a name tag that I can ask where to go. Mm. The first thing he did is pull out his phone. <laughs> and I said, wait a minute, time out. I'm like, talk to me about that. He's like, yeah. I'm like, well, walk me through your order of operations in your brain. He's like, okay, well, I go to my phone first. <laughs> then like, I'll do this, this, and this. And my last resort is I talk to somebody. And yeah. I thought how interesting, like how my first is to seek somebody out. And that's the last thing he thinks to do. So yeah. I think it's awesome. Like you notice like, wow, like this is mad, maddingly, madding, 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 whatever. It's crazy. <laughs> it's driving me mad watching somebody do this and it's just wildly inefficient. So you're just coming up with a better way to do it. Now, the other thing that you're going to be doing, which is different. So it's going to serve as like a, uh, kind of a, um, database for all these agents that you vetted very, very highly to make sure that they're producing at certain levels and providing certain levels of service and monitoring your reviews and everything. And there'll be no, for those agents that are referring amongst each other, there's no referral fee involved. You will also be advertising to the consumer. And if they do reach out to you and you refer to an agent, then there will be a referral fee. But it sounds like, because this is one of the things people talk about all the time, one is it's less than what these other platforms are charging. And two, I think you shared with me like a commitment that the intention isn't to continue to keep raising it. Because what I am aware of is that whoever controls the lead controls how much it costs. And mm -hmm. we went from, you know, with these reload business, it started off at 25%. Now it's like 45%, right? And yeah. there's no reason to imagine that some of these other platforms as time progresses, particularly if they're publicly traded companies, they're gonna be like, hey, uh, now instead of 25%, it's 30%. Instead of 30%, it's 35%, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's exactly right. The, uh, the platform for agents that's by invitation only is free. There's no monthly charge for that. It'll stay free. That's a commitment that we're making because, you know, it's for the agents. Um, the leads that come from us from, you know, soliciting the public, um, those will have a referral fee attached to it, just like any other, you know, online lead gen source, um, but it'll be 20% and it'll stay at 20%. Like you were just saying, um, it's it's very frustrating how the the next player that comes up that starts to take market share or whatever you want to call it, it all of a sudden it was a 25% referral fee, then it's 30%. Oh, and anything over 2 million is 35%. No, get out of here. It's one fee. This is in the interest of the agents and it's going to stay that way. Yeah, I love that, brother. Hell yeah, that's fantastic. You got a lot of agents clapping on the other end of this podcast right now. So um, that's awesome. And then you also mentioned to me, which I think is super cool, that like uh, you're also tying in like a kind of a social component to it as well, right? So talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so kind of, kind of what we started the call off with uh, where you mentioned the social impact. Um, one thing that is important to me going all the way back to your first question of looking at who has resources and the allocation of resources. Um, I want to be someone who can allocate resources. Um, I want this company to be a company that operates ethically and um, with humans in mind, you know, not just uh, quarter numbers and, and uh, <laughs> IPOs and, and stuff. So um, we, uh, have a partnership with the National Alliance to End Homelessness. So whenever someone goes to ListQuick, is looking to buy or sell a home, let's say they're looking to sell their house and they wanna find the, the best person in their marketplace to, to work with, we will connect you with that person. And of that 20% that we take from that agent, 1% um, of it will go back to the National Alliance to End Homelessness to help unhoused individuals. Um, and then we're also looking at getting into uh, a sust sustainable housing partner, um, but that's still early on. We're we're still in the works on that. But this company will always have social impact baked into it. Um, I want to increase the social impact. Honestly, believe it or not, I'm, I'm going to start at something that I know is doable, and then I I want to increase and and have. Um, an incomparable amount of our profits redirected back into areas where humans need it. That's fantastic, brother. And, uh, you know, this idea that like I can do good by doing good and social entrepreneurship, right? It's like, all right, well, how can we figure out a way, help as many people as we can, raise as much resources as we can, 
and then you becoming like a, you know, a conscientious, purposeful, intentional distributor, distributor of those resources in places that you think can make a difference. So that's huge. And being, you know, on a lot of these platforms, um, you know, I can tell you directly, which, you know, cause I know you've done a lot of research that there's a, not that, and then B there's also, um, you know, definitely not this feeling as though like the agents being looked after. It's more like, all right, well, how much can we get? You know, how much can we get? How much can we get? How much can we get sort of thing? Uh, and this seems yeah, to, to be your point. much different than that. Yeah. Sorry. I don't want to cut you off, but to your point, it almost seems like the antithesis of that, right? Where it's like you have, and I'm not going to name names, but you have say a $12 billion company buying up neighborhoods and driving up an already inflated market in, in many areas of the country. Um, and then, you know, taking those at a loss later on once they realize they made a mistake. But once they realize um, the algorithm doesn't really work that well. Well, and I mean, <laughs> to it, it's like so many other companies are touting, oh, our algorithm is crunching all these numbers. And it's like, you don't need an algorithm to figure out what's going on. You just need to pay attention and take some time to look at what's happening, right? You've got, you've got um, more people than ever relocating from COVID. And then you've got a, a housing market bubble and, oh, okay, that's already bad for the public. And there's no policy in place to help cool that off. So, you know, what are we going to do as a, as a company that's in the real estate industry? Oh, we're going to throw gas on the fire because we think that it's going to up our profits. Like that's, that's the antithesis of what I want was quick to be. So, yeah, I love that brother. And it's absolutely uh, very much so accurate. So, so I guess my question to you is, is um, where do you see this kind of moving forward? So you're kind of at like the, you know, initial stages growing and stuff. Like three years from now, what would be your vision for Less Quick? What would you guys be doing? How many people would you be helping? Like, what's what's the vision? Yeah. So, um, you know, one thing that you mentioned earlier was that uh, any real estate company with big ambition behind it is always looking for the ancillary services, right? They get their foot in the door with the lead gen, and then, but their ultimate goal is to do a mega title mortgage you know, uh, ancillary service like that. Um, List Quick honestly doesn't have a set in stone secret goal like that, or we're pretty straightforward. And one thing that I want to touch on consistently is that we want to be very consumer centric. We want to con consistently be listening to both the agents that we're partnered with that are on our platform for product updates or anything that might make the platform better and bring them more value, um, but also the general public, right? So if they say, hey, the list quick service of connecting me with an agent has been stellar, this is awesome. Now, you know, we'd love it if you could, uh, you know, bundle up title and mortgage and we'll do everything together. Sure, we'll follow that path and see where that goes. But they might say, hey, you know, we'd really love, um, you know, some type of service where we can, we know who we're going to work with, but um, we need these forms. This is way too much paperwork and we need this accelerated and made much easier because the average person doesn't know what they're reading. Like we want this made easier. We'll follow that and, you know, put resources into that. So um, the ultimate vision, I see us doing what we're planning to do now very well. Um, I see us being listening to our consumers, being very engaged with them if, if they want to speak with us or, or give us ideas. Um, and ultimately, one of my biggest, biggest ambitions for ListQuick is to help it give back to people and help kind of bridge the gap of, uh, I mean, one knowledge, you know, understanding one of the things we talked about earlier was um, how a lot of people just don't know the vehicles or tools that are available to them through investing or tax deference or whatever it be. And um, one thing that List Quick will start doing like this week on Instagram is help educating the public. Hey, what's a 1031 exchange? Hey, what's a per diem? What's a contingency? What contingency should I put in place on an offer if I'm a first time buyer? Um, so A, I want to educate people and I in a way that's quick and easy in the way that they want it. Oh, hey, I'm scrolling and I just saw the cutest puppy ever. And I also learned some stuff about real estate. Awesome. 
Um, but also, um, obviously, that larger social impact where we take some of the resources that we've been able to generate and either, you know, build housing for the homeless, um, sustainable housing, obviously things related to shelter makes sense, but the, the sky's the limit. I, I have a lot of ambition for this company. I, I see the writing on the wall with, you know, the other companies that work in this space and are making just gobs and gobs of money. And uh, I don't see it going anywhere other than back into their machine. So, um, you know, in a nutshell, I guess that's kind of my vision for the next three years. I love that, brother. And, uh, you know, we'll certainly do everything we can to support you and help make that happen. So if people want to kind of learn more about List Quick, if they want to connect with you, like where should they go? Um, honestly, our most active space right now is our Instagram, um, just at List Quick on Instagram. You can find us on Facebook, of course, too. Um, and then, you know, the website, www.listquick.net. Um, our consumer homepage will be going live in January. Um, we've, you know, kind of been getting our agents oriented and making sure we know which markets we have settled and which ones we're, we're still filling out. Um, but yeah, listquick.net or Instagram really at listquick is, is a great place to follow us and um, see what we're up to and then also learn stuff. You know, like I said, we want to be of value, not only to the agents, but also to the consumers. And a lot of that will come from Instagram. Love that, man. So listen, uh, check him out. He uh, is on a mission to not only, uh, you know, do well in the real estate space and help a lot of people, but also to help others with the resources that, uh, you know, is accumulated by doing such. And that's definitely something I can, you know, get behind. I believe other people can as well. So I appreciate you taking the time to be with me, brother. If you've liked this episode, be sure to uh, subscribe to the podcast, like, and share. Check us out online, AaronNovello.com or on Instagram at Aaron Novello. So thank you, Alec. I appreciate it. And I uh, look forward to connecting with you soon. Thanks so much, Aaron. I appreciate it. My pleasure, man.